what is it? I guess we've got to take this top thing apart and figure out what this sensor is. Um, but like, there's no ca Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I was going to say, there's no cables going to it. There's a little ribbon going down there. So, I... Aha, uh -huh. I thought the name Carba rung a bell. Yes, Carba actually uh, manufacture um, high security electronic locks um, for safes and other, you know, vault doors and other high security installations and stuff like that. And that's what we've got here. This is not a stepper motor. This is a, uh, this is the back part of this safe lock. So that goes inside the safe, the part you want to uh, secure. And outside here, you have what looks and feels like uh, you a traditional safe um, tumbler. So this Carba X09, uh, which I believe this one is, and probably the X10 is uh, probably uh, the same, and this is designed to simulate the look and feel the user interface of a tumbler lock, but actually make it instead of a, having a mechanical uh, lock on the back. You know, you spin it, uh, you know, four times this way to the right number, and then you spin it three times in the other direction to the right number, and then two, and then one, and that will open the uh, your, your traditional uh, tumbler lock, safe lock. Well, this one simulates that, but with an electronic interface. And I was um, thinking, well, where where are the numbers? You know, I usually have like zero to ninety nine around here, and like an arrow so you know exactly where you're turning it to. Well, this up here looks like it's actually an LCD. So it looks like it would actually display the number and this would be mounted on the uh, front of the door, of course, either safe door or other uh, door. It's mounted in like this. All you've got between them is a couple of uh, ribbon cables like this because um, this won't have any active electronics in it. Because in a high security electronic lock, uh, you want to minimize the um, attack methods. And I've done a whole video on um, electronic uh, safe locks and uh, trying to actually uh, do a side channel attack on them. So it looks like there's actually two so, uh, no, three. There's three ribbon cables inside this, just tiny little, a couple, only a couple of uh, three or four uh, pins each or something. So uh, this would have an encoder in it, which then um, sends the signals down uh, to here, and then uh, the microcontroller inside the actual lock uh, part of it will uh, decode, um, you know, how many times you spin it this way, how many times you spin it that way, and I would assume it's going to display a two-digit number on there. It wouldn't be any more than that. Uh, it wouldn't be any less. So a two-digit number, so that has the same look and feel as a tumbler lock. So this is really cool. But it looks like, check out down here, somebody, somebody's had fun. Holy Toledo. Somebody had fun. They've obviously attempted to drill into this thing um, to get it open. So is did this come from like a uh, an attempted cracked um, safe? Or something like that because if you don't know any uh, decent safe will actually have not only the safe door sits in between here and it could be you know huge hardened uh, steel safe door or you know a vault door or uh, something like that that's why it's so wide it can have like a really thick uh, door like this um, but they'll often have uh, like manganese is often uh, used as like an anti-drill plate on here I don't think this would actually have actually be like a manganese um, steel anti-drill uh, type thing obviously somebody's able to drill into this thing but you can integrate those into our uh, safe so I'll have like an anti-drill plate that actually uh, dulls the drill bits as you try and uh, drill through them and the safe or vault doors often uh, they won't be like large solid steel they'll have a you know a decent amount of steel in them might be you know 10 15 millimeters worth or something like that but inside they'll often uh, contain uh, like dulling uh, compounds in there like a material that actually um, dulls your drill bit if you try and actually drill through because because if you try, one of the attack methods for SACE is to actually drill through it. Like, you know, you, you could rip this thing um, off the front. You can pry it off. Um, but then uh, you can actually drill through the door. And if you drill through in the right location, here is the... Can we pull that out? Yeah, here's the locking bolt that comes out. And if you drill through in the right location, you can actually get through and either, uh, you know, did all the mechanism in there that uh, holds this bolt in place and actually retract it, pull it and retract it back. Um, and that's how you would uh, get in uh, via a drill attack method. And another attack method might be uh, to try and like feed in a, like, you know, high voltage into here to try and uh, back power the electronics in here and then open the uh, solenoid that way. Because this has an electronic uh, solenoid in it. And if you apply power to the solenoid, boom, 
the latch comes out or goes back in. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the other attack uh, methods. But these Carba uh, locks, this is, you know, a really expensive, uh, probably high security uh, meets, you know, probably, you know, international security standards and uh, stuff like that. So this would likely be very expensive, certified, probably incredibly difficult, if not impossible to actually um, hack. I don't know, leave it in the comments if you know if this Carba X09 um, has actually uh, been hacked. So, you know, really, unless you know the combination or you can attack uh, the door um, so, or the uh, safe some other way, <laughs> You ain't getting in there. And one of the other methods uh, for getting into uh, SACE would be magnet, of course, because the solenoid is operated magnetically. So, you know, you get a big ass magnet, like next to, if you've got a real flimsy safe door and stuff, like you can uh, maybe put a large magnet in the correct, big neodymium magnet in the correct location, and it can actually open the solenoid. But, uh, you know, your high uh, security uh, certified ones would not be uh, vulnerable to those sort of magnetic attacks either. So let's take this apart and see what we've got. So this is the front spinnery thing. I don't know how you would enter the uh, numbers like this. I'd, can you, is that gonna, is that gonna push? No, I think maybe you'd just uh, like, you know, spin it until it gets to a number and then you'd wait and for a second and then you'd reverse direction um, and then you would reverse direction again and it knows which number it gets to um, on the uh, display here and then uh, this thing like will just continually spin forever and the microcontroller in here would uh, do the uh, decoding and display your number on here for the user as they enter. So, you know, it just simulates the look and feel. But anyway, so that is interface to there. If we crack this open, so if we get all this off, that comes off. So that's just uh, designed to go into the shaft and that just goes into the top there. Very nice. It's got a seal around there, weatherproof uh, rubber baby buggy bumper seal on there. That's nice. And then inside here, here's your uh, interface. So that would be your uh, encoder to actually uh, encode that. And uh, it looks like it just goes into, yeah, a Zebra interface down here, Zebra strip, and that's just an elastomeric uh, connector like this, and that just um, interfaces. So they've gone to a lot of effort in there to sort of like uh, interface uh, the rotary encoder here with that. And then we've got a couple of other ribbons here which go into this little board. There's no electronics in there, that's just a uh, interface. Oh, we can take the, yep, we can take the whole lot off. Up here will be our display. Ugh. Yep, that comes out like that, and there you go. Yep, that's right, that's just an LCD. So I'll have to put up the, uh, the I'm assuming I can get a manual uh, for this thing, and uh, yeah, it'll um, have the indicator of what's on here, but I reckon that's gonna be a two-digit uh, display to simulate the look and feel of an old traditional tumbler jobby. So as you can see, there's no electronics in there at all, because you don't want any attack methods into the lock by having the electronics on this side. It's just the rotor encoder here and the LCD that gets uh, the feedback. So, you know, it's not like you can like override, uh, you know, you can tap into the LCD pins and then try and get into the micro uh, controller that way. Although I guess in theory that might be possible for a power line attack or something like that, perhaps. But I got to think that, you know, a big reputable certified brand like uh, Carba would have, uh, you know, thought of that sort of thing. But anyway, in theory, uh, like a maybe uh, like a power line attack might be uh, possible as well because you've got these access to these ribbon cables, but all you've got to do is like filter on the other side and Bob's your uncle. So if we open this up, you can see what's in there. We've got ourselves a shaft here, which comes through and this piece just fell out and it looks like that goes into the inside right in there. That looks like it's sheared off there. So that would be part of the uh, bolt that comes out there. So this would be, uh, looks like your little uh, motor solenoid -y thing that just moves this arm up here which then moves your plate out like that, and then that's what uh, locks your door, of course. So all of your strength is in this bolt here, but of course, if you look inside a uh, safe, uh, you're like a large safe, you'll see that this then pushes on um, other big armatures, which then might have, you know, three or four big bolts, huge, big, you know, 30 millimeter diameter jobbies that then go into the side of the safe. So this just like pushes on, uh, you know, a big, mechanical arm inside here. I'll see if I can get a uh, photo and uh, put one up. So this might, you know, on a small save, this might be 
uh, this here might be the only mechanical thing that you know prevents the safe uh, from opening but this can actually um, be extended out into uh, larger things uh, depending on how uh, you want the installation um, in whatever size safe or vault door or whatever you're doing and here's the PCB and you'll note from the shiny shiny that's all potted completely potted for uh, moisture ingress then we've got this thing here which presses in and I originally thought that this might have been like you know if you press the front of this this is how you enter a number and then that presses on that but it's not because the shaft actually goes in here like this so yeah that looks like it goes down into there somewhere so I'm not sure I don't know is that an anti-tamper um thing or not I'm not sure whether or not that has something to do with sensing whether or not this is open but it doesn't seem to be right anyway I won't go into uh, the full details there but anyway we've got ourselves a super cap and of course one thing you might be wondering here is how they actually power this thing um, there is no internal battery and that's what the super caps for you might think of oh, the super caps are for holding the uh, combination when it loses power but no um, the combination is stored in a secure E squared uh, prom here that'd be the uh, micro there I'm not sure what that other uh, chippy up there is don't know but anyway it doesn't matter so what I think happens here is I have to confirm this with the manual I'll whack it up um but it, it has to be right you know <laughs> by deduction um this thing actually this encoder here of course generates a uh, voltage uh, you know it could be like a quadrature output or something um but then that can be used you can actually rectify that and build the charge up on the cap and that's why I think they've got this reduction gear mechanism in here so it spins this faster and then you can use that you can rectify that and then store it in the capacitor so what I reckon happens is that you uh, you know spin this a couple of times to build up enough power to turn the lock on so when you walk up to the door and it's been depowered uh, for a while you won't see anything on the LCD but you spin it a few times and I reckon that builds up enough charge in here you know for a minute of operation or whatever and then as you um, you know spin the dial to enter the combination it puts even more and more charge in there and then that's enough charge to operate the microcontroller and also it's got to operate the uh, the solenoid motor thing down here which then deactivates that so yeah you can you know you have to get a decent amount of energy out of that to power it but this thing is not externally battery powered anyway I won't go through and uh, look at the details on that board but uh, suffice it to say this would almost be certainly be uh, certified to a standard and you probably can't change the firmware at all once you, uh, you know, certify this uh, thing with the certification authority um, they would you know you can't change the firmware or anything um, if you wanted to do that you probably have to re-certify uh, uh, the thing but uh, yeah anyway there's the uh, pin interface which then goes down to the uh, pins down here which goes through those ribbon cables going over to oh, the front end and I was going to say they have multiple ones for redundancy but it doesn't look like it that's a five pin jobby that's a four pin jobby and then another couple of pins then going over another four or five going over to your uh, encoder um, on the front and I'm trying to get medieval on its ass here <laughs> but it's like you can see it's all gunked inside there I'm um, trying to get this out so sorry to all you carba aficionados this is probably sacrilege but yeah um, I don't think I, I like my chances of getting that out intact oh goodness gonna need a bigger boat yeah here we go I think I, I think I got it oh look at that oh wow <laughs> oh there's all the stuff on the bottom as well wow that's interesting uh, what were these two pins down here I'm not sure what they went to and yes uh, we have voided the uh, voided the warranty on this yeah there's a, it's a little two pin interface down there does that actually could that be a battery interface maybe I'm wrong about it being self powered but yeah anyway there's the back of the board still can't really figure out what that does doesn't does it do anything I'm not sure that does anything at all um, that just might be part of the mechanical that might be just required for the mechanical interface and the board just got in the way so they had to put a hole through it um, yeah <laughs> not entirely sure but anyway there is a lot of stuff in there isn't there 
for an, one of these electronic locks. So, yeah, they're quite complicated. And, uh, yes, they're designed to be uh, not hackable, but maybe in theory there's a way to get through them. Oh, no, look at that. The pot in. The pot in ripped off those poor SOT23 jobbies. Oh no, ripped off some of the board as well. I thought for a second that there was another board embedded in that potting, but there's not. Well, there kind of is, partially, but it was part of this top board. It just it just ripped off a whole bunch of the components. Yeah, you can see why that has that uh, exposed copper there. <laughs> Half the SOT 23s are missing. <laughs> nice. And there was another little uh, coggy thing which uh, goes down in there somewhere. I'm not absolutely sure of that, but there you go. That is a uh, Kaba, um X09 high security electronic lock for safes, vault doors, um, even regular, you know, doors in a high security installation or uh, something like that. And this puppy wouldn't be uh, cheap. I'll see if I can find a uh, price on this, but uh, you're not going to get any change for many, many hundreds of dollars, let me tell you. Someone's had a Harry Hacker at this one. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get a note with it, so uh, we don't know the uh, history of this, but thank you very much for sending that in. I've got uh, real interest in electronic uh, safe locks, and these are uh, fascinating things, and uh, there's a lot of engineering effort and certification and testing and standards and stuff that go into these electronic locks to ensure that they aren't um, you know, hackable. That's why there's no electronics on the door um, side of things over here with the knob. That's just the uh, encoder and the LCD uh, feedback uh, display. And yeah, I'm not sure like you'd be able to um, put any like high energy, high voltage pulses into this and then back feed uh, the solenoid in here, which opens this sort of thing. They would have been, you know, thoroughly uh, tested and certified uh, for those sorts of attacks. Of course, you're cheap, no name, one hung low brand electronic locks. Um, yeah, they're not going to be built uh, to the same standard as this one. But uh, yeah, I'm sure this is why you pay a pretty penny for it. Um, and it doesn't look like a new design either. Aha, uh -huh, there you go. Scraped off the pot in. That's an 8566 Philips um, LCD driver. Hard to get the numbers at the right angle. And this is a Philips Micro. There you go. There you go. P something or other. 87C something. I can't read it on my cam's call to screen. But yeah, that's the Micro. And that's where the uh, code is stored in this thing. I don't see a secure E squared prom externally. No, it's just internal to the Micro. But of course, the whole idea is that you don't have access to this electronics because it's inside the safe. It's on the other side of that vault. Um, and unless you can like uh, drill through and probe it or, you know, in theory, like do a power line attack, over the LCD cable or something like that, then um, yeah, but it's you know it's not hard to uh, you know, design out um, those attack scenarios if you're aware of them. I'm sure um, Carba are because they know what they're doing. They're a big name in the business. So there you go. That is a fascinating. I hope you enjoyed that uh, look inside these high security electronic safe locks as much as I did. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.